There are so many stories never been told, and many voices never been heard. It is my responsibility to be out there searching for these stories to document. If something happened and was never documented, it never occurred. A decade and a half of my life searching for that. Actually, when I'm telling their stories, I'm going through the story of my life. They are part of my life as I am part of theirs. I'm Mohammed Mohaisen. I'm the Associated Press Chief Photographer for the Middle East, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Um, uh, time flies. It's been already a year ago since we went to document the refugee crisis across Europe. Begun from Lesbos to the Balkans to West Europe, Austria, Slovenia, Germany, etc. Thousands and thousands of people fled their, their homes, looking for new homes, for safe places, from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Iraq, and many other countries. Row, you know. Light vest jackets all over the road and stuff. So it's like the trail where all of the refugees walk along to reach uh, the registration center and then to the port of Medellin. So. Whenever I travel, I find myself pointing my camera toward children because I believe children are the real victims of any conflict. Um, children can't choose. They don't choose where to born, what to live, or the circumstances around them. Children in all over part of the world share the same thing in common. They seek fun, they seek joy, they seek happiness. Um, for example, this is uh, these are the pictures of uh, some of the children that I photographed in Pakistan. The beautiful, beautiful Afghan refugee children that I have seen really growing in the front of my eyes. It's it's nice to come back once in a while and look at them and touch the papers as if I'm actually shaking their hands. It takes me right away to the moment that I met them and photographed them. So you know we're almost to the spot where the many refugees are stranded. Because the last few weeks they have been allowing refugees from Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria to cross the border to Macedonia. 
So now many, many people are stranded and left behind. So You know, we don't just pass by something and take pictures and go back and file it and then move on into another place. This takes a lot of energy. You need, first, you arrive to an environment, you arrive to something, if it's a story, if it's an event, if it's spot news things, you, you feel the place, you identify yourself without even talking it's respect you should respect the people that you photograph respect the people that you pass through and these people believe me can they can smell they can tell if you're a friend or you're a threat Allah <laughs> We know that people are tired, people are exhausted. are frustrated. So I'm gonna just copy, copy the desk so we could be ahead. The eyes could never lie. It's the door to the soul, especially children. I mean, a child could never lie, could never hide anything. And through their eyes, I wanted to focus straight in their eyes and let the world see what these children have seen. You know, and uh, that's the gate. This is Zahra, Zahra Mahmoud, a five-year-old Syrian refugee who's now lived with her family in an informal tented settlement in Jordan. Beautiful girl, very quiet, very smart. Um, when I asked her, what would you like me to bring you? The only thing that came into her mind is uh, hair ties. She wanted simply hair ties with uh, some Mickey Mouse figures and stuff on it. I'm so tired, so excited. Um, full of emotions too. It was such a morning. We just crossed the Greek border heading to Macedonia and hopefully we can find the car very soon we have to make it to the border before the sunset where the refugees cross i'm old for god's sake 15 years in this lifestyle I feel 70 already, not even 34, 70 for God's sake. But I'm happy and lucky. It's like two hours, two hours, four plus one and a half. It's the feeling to be um, heading to 
cover a story, I think to tell a story, and then there is the other feeling of when you capture the story, but the best feeling that you could ever feel is when this message, this story is ready to be delivered to the outside world, to be delivered out there. Seven, seven flights. It's a closed military area. We won't be allowed to take pictures inside. They board the trains. At least we can see the family. You know, see how we are doing. None of us slept all this night. just 100 meter it's a marathon and you have to keep on running and running and running and running and never say I'm tired the moment you feel you're tired it's the moment you feel you are full of energy again it all started with my grandma's Polaroid um, that magical box that when you press the bottom a piece of paper comes out and it has the scene, the moment, the exact moment that makes you live it again and again and again. I heard it's the first time that the Times and the Guardian published the same front page. Out of Afghanistan, Laiba Hazrat, a refugee from Afghanistan living in a slum in Islamabad, is one of a series of extraordinary portraits by AP photographer Mohammed Moise. Um, you hardly can uh, get such portraits into a front page, but the importance and uh, the power in, in, in her eyes managed to make the editors make it a front page. So, so from a child living in Islam in Pakistan, she became the face of the biggest English newspaper. And that's... Really, really, real recognition when, as I mentioned, when any picture that I capture goes out there and becomes, uh, and becomes some kind of a voice of the child or the person that I photographed. So that's what makes my day. That's the real price. So that's the biggest achievement for a photojournalist is when, when when the person or the subject that they photograph go out there and make echo, make people think, make people realize that there is a life outside their lives. What keeps me going is believing in what I do, believing of the importance of what we do as photojournalists. We're there to tell the stories, 